Who let you in, Hank? This is a mechanics conference, not a parts meeting. Ah, uh, where'd you mechanics be without a parts man? All right, all right, you two, break it up. It's okay, Tech. Hank was invited. Red here, Shorty and I thought tonight's demonstration on overdrive maintenance would help Hank out in his parts work, too. Ah, uh, Larry, I was just kidding. Sure, we're glad to have a parts man in these meetings. They ought to come to all of them. Thanks, Tech. I'm just looking in to get better acquainted with the parts inside the overdrive. That's right, Tech. I told Hank we'd already covered how the overdrive operated and how to service the electrical controls. And I pointed out that we were going to complete the overdrive servicing story by taking this unit down, cleaning and inspecting the parts, and then putting it back together. That way, you fellas will know the overdrive from soup to nuts, and you can do any job on this unit whenever it's needed. Sounds good, Larry. Red and I took out both the transmission and overdrive as a unit, just like you said, that right? You did fine, boys. Exactly what I wanted. Now, Red, suppose you and Shorty get the parking brake off and remove the governor and the rail lockout switch so we can start the disassembly. Don't lose that little plunger that falls out when you remove the switch. Good point, Tech. Now, use this punch for the next step. Oh, yeah, Larry. We need the punch to drive out this taper pin that holds the control shaft in the overdrive housing, right? Correct, me boy. Just drive the pin up from the bottom. And after that, pull the control shaft out as far as possible so you can disengage it from the shift rail. Then, turn it about 90 degrees counterclockwise to hold it in that position. You got that so far? Yep, still with you, boss. Next, we probably unscrew the speedometer drive pinion sleeve and pinion from the overdrive housing, eh? Looks like the natural thing to me, Shorty. And after that, I'd say we'd remove the gear shift housing, shift forks and rails from the transmission. Ah, you fellas are doing fine. Now, once you've got that out of the way, remove the four screws that hold the overdrive housing and adapter to the transmission case. Yeah, fellas, and here's the tip. Use a soft hammer to tap the adapter a few times. That'll help separate the adapter from the transmission. Okay, Tech. Got it. What follows now, Larry? Well, now you can pull the overdrive unit, including the transmission main shaft, from the transmission. The front synchronizer stop ring and spreader spring will drop off into the transmission. And after that, remove the two recessed adapter screws and lock washers from the front face of the adapter. Be sure the control shaft is pulled out so that it disengages from the rail. You'll get tied up in knots if you don't. Good going, Tech. That's mighty important. Then tap on the end of the overdrive main shaft a few times to free it up from its bearing in the overdrive housing. You might have to tap on the adapter or housing to separate those parts. And that way, when you remove the housing from the adapter, the overdrive main shaft remains on the pinion cage. Now... Watch this next step. Remove the retractor spring and guide sleeve from the overdrive housing. The retractor spring and guide sleeve are between the partition on the left side of the housing and rear wall. You got that? No. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I've got them. What's the next step, Larry? Why, next you can pull the overdrive main shaft and ring gear assembly from the pinion cage. Be careful to catch the clutch rollers that'll drop out of the retainer. Better count those rollers. There should be 12 of them. Right. Now, remove the screws that hold the solenoid to the adapter. Turn the solenoid one-sixth of a turn clockwise and remove it. One-sixth of a turn clockwise. Yep, there she comes. Now, notice that the end of this pawl rod has two flat surfaces. When removing or installing the solenoid, be sure to make the slight turn so the flats on the pawl rod will slide through the slot in the end of the pawl. I get it, Larry. Sure, I remember. That pawl rod has to be connected to the control pawl so that it can move the pawl in and out of the control plate. You're right on the ball, Red. Now, getting back to disassembly, we'll try out the clutch cam retaining clip. That will let you remove the pinion cage assembly and overrunning clutch from the splines on the transmission main shaft. Incidentally, fellas, don't separate the retainer from the cam unless there's a need for it. Those parts are held together by two hooked retainer springs, and it's quite a job to reassemble them. Right, oh, Tech, you can rest easy. We'll leave them alone. All right, Shorty. Now, 
you slide the sun gear with the shift rail and fork off the transmission main shaft. You can remove the shifting collar from the sun gear if you have to by taking out the forward snap ring. I see, Larry. Then, to disassemble the adapter, remove the snap ring from its groove. That lets you remove the cover plate and the sun gear control plate with its balk ring from the adapter. Following that, you can remove the control pawl and the interlock plunger. If you want to remove the bearing, just remove the snap ring which holds the bearing in the adapter. Then, remove the bearing, oil baffle, and the transmission main shaft. Well, there's nothing too hard about this job so far. Now I suppose you pry out that pawl rod oil seal and throw it away. Yeah, Red, we always use new seals. Take the adapter bearing off the main shaft next by removing this snap ring and pressing the shaft from the bearing. By the way, that ring gear is listed separately on my parts list, Larry. How do you get it off the overdrive main shaft? Well, that's not too easy. A large snap ring holds that ring gear in place. But you can use a sharp pointed tool to pry the end of the snap ring out far enough to get a narrow screwdriver under it. Then you can work the ring out of its groove. Now, Remove the main shaft oil seal from the overdrive housing. Of course, if you wanted to replace just that seal, you could do it without removing the unit from the car by using this special puller. Glad you thought of that, Tech. Now, our next step is to pry out the front and rear snap rings and drive the bearing from the housing. Once you've done that, you can remove the control lever from the control shaft. Then, push the control shaft inward and let it drop into the housing. Finally, you can pry out the control shaft oil seal and throw it away. You'll use a new one during reassembly. Well, now that just about covers how you take the overdrive unit apart. Once you've got the overdrive disassembled, clean all parts and inspect them for damage or wear. Yeah, fellas. And if there's ever a gear tooth missing, don't come running up to me and asking for a false tooth for the gear. Bring up the damaged part, and I'll give you the right replacement. Uh, don't worry, Hank. I won't let these jokers pull that old gag on you. <laughs> no, I don't think you'll bite on that gag again, Hank. Anyway, this is a pretty good little unit. There isn't much that can go wrong with it. Of course, after a lot of miles, you'd expect to find normal wear. Hey, someone better turn this record over. We've gone too many miles on this side. Well, how's everything look, Red? Fine, so far. Not a scratch. I still got to check the pinion cage assembly and the overrunning clutch. Yeah, Red, after washing that pinion cage, it pays to spin each pinion with your fingers to check the condition of the needle roller bearings. If you've cleaned it thoroughly, but you still detect some bearing roughness, you'll have to replace the cage assembly. That's right. Pinions or their bearings are not furnished separately. You see, if the needle bearings break and jam, the pinion would bind and could strip the pinion and ring gear teeth. I see, Larry. These pinions all spin freely, though, so we're all okay on that. Swell. Now, carefully inspect the overrunning clutch parts for signs of brinelling, especially the rollers and cams. If the rollers show any surface marks, replace them. And if the flat surfaces of the cams show marks or slight indentations, you better use a new cam and set of rollers. However, any slight lengthwise indentations on the inside surface of the outer race are normal. Those can't affect the operation of the clutch. I understand, Larry. And this overrunning clutch gets a clean bill of health. Fine, Red. And now use a pull scale like this to check tension of the balk ring on its control plate. Hold the plate in a vise. There should be at least a one and one half pound pull. If it's too loose, replace the balk ring. It's installed with the embossed surface against the control plate. You better tell the boys why that tension's important. Oh, yeah. Well, if an owner ever reports a noisy shift into overdrive, a balk ring too loose on its control plate could be the cause. When there's not enough tension, the balk ring doesn't let the notch in the control plate line up with the control pawl as quickly as it should. So there's a noticeable thump when the pawl finally does enter the notch. I see. Any other points on inspection? Well, be sure there are no burrs on the end of the pawl rod. If you see any, dress them down. Yeah, and here's another important point. Don't forget to use new gaskets and oil seals for a good oil-tight fit. 
Use new snap rings where needed for a snug fitting assembly too. But be sure to use a snap ring with the same thickness as the one you replace. boy, Tech. That's why the parts department is here, to give you the parts you need. Right. Now, here's how you drive the new Paul Rod oil seal into place. Just use this special driver and wrap it home. I got you, Larry. I suppose that after you drive the adapter bearing on the transmission main shaft, you secure it with the snap ring. Correct. And then put the oil baffle in the front face of the adapter, keeping the pressed out section toward the rear. You still with me? Yep. Carry on. Fine. Now you install the main shaft and bearing in the adapter against the oil baffle. Secure that with the snap ring. The next thing to do is install the Paul interlock plunger in the adapter. Then you install the Paul with its grooved side up. Okay. Grooved side up. Then you install the sun gear control plate and balk ring. Keep the notch in the ring lined up with the control pole. Lining up that notch is important. You see, the pole has to slide through the notch and into the control plate. Yeah, I see what you mean, Tech. Well, now, fellas, we'll install the cover plate against the control plate in the adapter. Then, engage the shift fork in the shifting collar and install the sun gear on the main shaft. Guide the shift rail into its hole in the adapter. Then, mesh the sun gear with the control plate. Yeah, Larry. And then, you button it all up with the snap ring in the adapter. You fellas catching on how this goes together? Sure thing, Tech. Don't worry, we'll holler when we start feeling lost. Now, install the pinion cage and cam on the transmission main shaft and secure that with the retaining clip. Use some heavy grease in the roller retainer to hold the rollers in place as you install them. Now, we'll oil the adapter bearing and the gears and also put a little oil in the inside of the overdrive main shaft and ring gear. That's for initial lubrication. Next, we'll hold the transmission main shaft with one hand and install the overdrive main shaft with the other hand. Turn the overdrive main shaft counterclockwise as you push the ring gear into mesh with the pinions. I see what that does. Turning the shaft moves the rollers down on the low part of the cams and makes the shaft installation easier, right? Correct, my boy. And don't you dare force that shaft into position. That can push the rollers out of their retainer pockets. They won't just sound like loose marbles either. One roller out of place and wham, you got steel gear burgers in the overdrive. Okay, Tech, we'll watch that. I suppose you install the speedometer gear on the overdrive main shaft next. Hey, Larry? Yep. And that gets us ready to put the retractor spring guide sleeve in the retractor spring. Compress that spring by hand and install it in the overdrive housing, keeping the flange of the sleeve toward the rear. Then... You use this oil seal driver to install the control shaft oil seal into the housing. Won't installing the control shaft cut that seal up, Larry? No, and here's why, Red. You put this protecting sleeve in the seal first. Then you install the control shaft from the inside of the housing, pushing the sleeve out as the shaft enters the seal. Keep in mind, though, that you have to position the control lever on the shaft so that the lever will be installed in the overdrive setting when the lug on the inner end of the control shaft is pointing upward. Okay, Larry. Then I suppose you button that shaft up with the plane washer, lock washer, and nut. Righto. And then pull the shaft outward slightly to provide clearance for the shift rail. Now, make sure the overdrive housing bearing inner snap ring is in place. Then, using this driver, Install the bearing in the housing. Open side in first. Then put in the rear snap ring. When you install the solenoid, remember to turn it about one-sixth of a turn counterclockwise to be sure the pawl rod is hooked into the pawl. Okay, Larry, one-sixth turn. There. That's right in place now. Fine. Now, guide the housing carefully over the end of the shaft. Hold the front end of the shift rail and guide it carefully into the hole in the housing and retractor spring. 
position the notch in the shift rail so the end of the control shaft will enter the notch. Install that housing carefully, fellas. Just ease the rail into the hole. Then button the adapter to the housing with the two adapter screws and lug washers. Okay, Tech. Easy does it. Nicely done, me boys. Now push the shift rail into the adapter a couple of times to see if it works freely. Yeah, fellas, if that shift rail binds, the unit won't come back out of overdrive. You'll have to loosen the adapter screws and shift the adapter a little to free it up if it's binding. There's no binding on this rail, Larry. Good. Now, from here on, you assemble the main shaft and gears into the transmission just like on any other job. Oh, be sure the little oil trough is in place in the rear face of the transmission so oil will flow into the overdrive housing. I'll watch out for that oil trough, Larry. Say, don't forget to put this synchronizer stop ring and spreader spring back in. Those are the parts that dropped into the transmission case during disassembly. Forget those and the owner will be right back pronto. Right, Tech. Now, on that control shaft, push it into position in the shift rail. Then secure it with the taper pin. Just drive the pin in from the top. Okay, that's as good as done. Swell. Now you install the governor and rail lockout switch. Be sure to put the little plunger in before you install the lockout switch, or the electrical system won't work. Yeah, don't forget that plunger. Well, now you're ready to install the main shaft oil seal. Then, install the parking brake and fill the unit with oil. You'd better explain that oiling job, Larry. Sure. Just fill the overdrive first with transmission oil until it runs out of the level hole. Then, fill the transmission. Install both level plugs and you're in business. Very clear, Larry. We sure can't go wrong on that. You know, I'd kind of like to put an overdrive on my Plymouth. Come back with me to the parts department, Red. I just got the bulletin from the parts division. It explains the whole package installation story. Hey, I want to see that bulletin too, Hank. Well, fellas, this just about covers my story on disassembly, inspection, and reassembly of the overdrive. And a good, clear account as far as I'm concerned, Larry. Now I know how those parts go together. It's sure going to help the parts department serve you mechanics better. What do you say, Tech? You're absolutely right, Hank. And now you boys know quite a bit about the overdrive. This assembly story is another big step toward keeping you mechanics the best informed service gang in the business. <laughs>